Hi there, Willie here again with another special digitizing episode of Embroidery Hub. So far on this show, I've shown you how to digitize for a patch and how to digitize for 3D Puff. But today, I'm going to show you how to digitize for something more personal. And what I mean by that is realistic portrait embroidery. Now, in an earlier episode of Embroidery Hub, I already showed you how to embroider portraits on our eight inch panel on the SWD embroidery machine. In fact, in that episode, you didn't have to digitize at all because the panel auto digitized the portrait for you. If you didn't check that out yet, I've linked it in the description below. But for those of you who don't have that panel, today is your lucky day since I'm going to show you how to digitize your own portrait using our Chroma Lux software and a free app called TuneApp that I downloaded from the Play Store. Then I'll show you how to embroider that design onto a decorative pillow that you can display in your home. So enough of me talking, let's jump right in. So before you can even begin digitizing, first you need a nice clean file to work with. And since it's much easier to digitize using vectorized files than a photograph, the first thing that you'll need to do is to vectorize a photograph. For today's example, I'll be showing you how to use the Tune app to accomplish this and I'll simply upload a photo of myself to start. Now you don't have to use this app, but you'll find it easier if you don't have any graphic design experience. All right guys, so here's the Tune app. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on it. I'm going to choose a selfie. Let's say I'm gonna use this one here. So once you choose the selfie that you want to use, all you have to do is uh, press a check mark and it'll, it'll start doing uh, the artwork. It'll start vectorizing it. So as you can see here, there we go. And all I have to do now is just send it to my email and from my email, drag it over to the Chroma Lux software and we can start digitizing from that point on. All right guys, so now let's go ahead and jump into the digitizing portion of this project. Now the first thing I'm going to do is show you the difference between the original picture and how I converted it into the vector file that makes it a lot easier to understand your shades and your colors. So now I'm going to transfer this over to my Chroma Lux, which we are going to be using Chroma Lux. If you guys wanna know a little bit about Chroma Lux, it, uh, it's the top tier of Chroma. There's Chroma Inspire, Plus, and Lux. I like to use Lux because it makes my job way easier and I'll show you why in a couple of minutes. Uh, but if you wanna learn more about it, you can scroll down to the description below. We're gonna have a video there for you. So here we have it. All I did was drag it onto Chroma Lux. Right from the beginning, I want to make sure that I'm going to be using the right size or at least close enough. So what I'm going to do is get my little ruler here because we have kind of like a gap in between the head and the top piece. So I'm going to grab it from here, just hold it and drag it. And we're about 10 inches on height. So that's pretty high for me. I don't want it to be that height. So let's go ahead and change it. Let's go to transform and let's bring the height down to half of that. So put it at five inches. So it'll automatically change your width to a uh, proportionate size. So there we go. Now we can start the actual editing. First thing I'm going to do is use my favorite tool, which is a complex fill. And I'm going to start off with my skin because everything else is gonna be on top of that. So I'll start off from the bottom from this part of the beard. And we don't have to be perfect when it's overlapping because we will always go back and uh, have some stitches that are gonna be going over that. So you don't have to worry about that too much. And I am clicking on the control button to have it go in the circle instead of just straight lines. Okay, so right here, as you can see, I stopped in, I left it as a straight line because I'm going to have a different angle now going around. And there we have it, I'm going to right click. Now the first thing I like to do is change the color, right? So we're gonna go ahead and select it. So as you can see right now is in 2D, I'm going to switch it over to the realistic mode. So once I go from the realistic view, now it looks a lot better, but we do have to change the color. So now what I'll do is I'll unview the blue and I'll go over to the small box that's the blue color. I'll left click and I'll use this square that's going to tell me what color I'm gonna be using. And I'm going to try to get it as close as I possibly can to the color that I want it to be. So in this case, I'm just gonna be clicking around until I find something that's very similar. We can start off with this. And now we can put it back and view it again. Now let's take a look around, see if we need anything else around here. So I would say this part here is the same color. All right, so now let's go over to a complex fill and I'm gonna make this a little easier on me now. Once I click complex fill, I'm gonna go over to the magic wand 
Since this is something very simple and it's uh, there's nothing on top of this, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, left click, right click outside, and there we go. Makes it so much easier on me. Remember, we do have to overlap. So I'm gonna go back to my selecting tool and just bring it up a little bit, bring it to one side a little bit more, to the other side, and to the bottom. Just a tiny bit. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm going to unview this one too. We'll go over to my complex fill. And now we're gonna go to a different color. We're gonna go to a darker shade of my face. So what I'll do is I'll select it right now, go to the color chart and put the box over the color that I want it to be or as similar as possible. And I'm gonna choose a different color that's a little darker. Uh, this is more brown. Let's see this one here. Let's see if this will work. Okay, so I'm going to right click on it. I still have my wand selected. Going to left click, right click outside. And there we go. Now I'll do the same thing to this one. I'm going to go to my selection tool. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Left and right a little bit more. And the reason why I don't do it all at once is because I don't want it to, I don't want it to make the whole thing bigger. Uh, if you really want to go into details in just one section, you could always go into your shape tool and select, for example, all of these. Let's say I want just either these right here and bring this side up. And let's say I want this side here and then I'll bring this side up. I could do both ways. But for now, that's fine. So now I'm going to go over and finish up with the dark part. But for the rest of these, I'm just gonna do it manually. Let's deselect the wand and let's just go over it. Now this is a shade, so you don't have to be super perfect. You can get as close as you possibly can. And remember to always overlap. So I'm going to try to do as much as I can of this color, just so I don't have so many trims and it doesn't take longer. If I do have to come back later, I can. This is gonna be a pretty big design. I'm thinking maybe around the 40,000s, which is usually gonna take like about an hour depending how many trims you have. So if you can try to have less trims and make it still look good, it should be good. So as you can see, I'm leaving the shadow as a 0.4 density and as a tatami stitch, because if I make it into a satin stitch or something else that's gonna really stand out, uh, remember it is a shadow, so I don't want it to be standing out too much. And I'm also not gonna be putting a hole, that's why I'm leaving it at 0.4, and I'm gonna change the back into a 0.3. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's go over to the back, change it into a 0.3. Now this shadow here on the neck, I will put this as a 0.3 as well. All right, so let's keep going. Let's go back to our complex fill and let's continue. Now as you can see, this is basically just tracing. It makes the job a whole lot easier when you can cancel out all of these shades that we have when you take a regular picture. So now what I'm going to do to make sure I'm not missing anything, I'm going to select on the picture and I'm going to bring it to the front. And now as you can see on the shadow of my nose, I have the same color as my skin on this two areas here. So for this, I will be making a hole. Let's go to the shaping tool and we have to click on one of the purple areas, right click on it to find the add a hole option. And I'm just gonna make and trace this hole. Do the same thing on the other side. And there we go. There's some things that you don't want to put because when it's too little details, it might not look good. So one of the things is these two spots that we have here, one on the left and one on the right. These two on the nose, there are two white dots that they might not even show. So let's leave it as is. And here you can tell that this part of my ear is a little darker. I'm not going to add the shadow there. I'm going to leave it as is because I will be adding some stitches on this black piece here. All right, so now let's go into the most realistic part of this design, which is going to be the hair. This is the eye catcher. So I'm going to show you a trick of how you can make the hairs look really random and very realistic. So what I do is I go into my complex fill and I'm going to make this black, my beard black and my hair black. So let's go over and select the black color. And I'm going to do the whole beard in black and I'm just going to add an accent and maybe a dark gray. 
So as you can see, I'm not really paying attention too much to details. I'm just going around because the trick that I'm going to show you is going to do that job for me. All right, so now once you trace the beard, we're going to make sure we're on a shaping tool or just re-click on it. And we're gonna go over to the pattern. Once you go to the pattern, you're going to select the random stitch. Now, once you're in random, you press apply, you're going to notice now it kind of looks like hair, right? So that's exactly what we want. We want to see that, but we can go even a step ahead of that and add the other layer and mix it in with a little bit less density. And that will also help out. But before we do that, let's go into the shaping tool and let's make the hairs go, instead of sideways, go down. I'm going to start it over on the left and end it on the right. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a darker gray, select the complex fill, select the dark gray. Now this one, I'm just going to go on the bottom area here. You don't have to be perfect because remember, this is going to be very random. So you can, you can kind of like play around with it. You can make some zigzags too. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. Let's go ahead and select that one. Let's go and select our pattern and select random. And we're going to take out density by raising the number. So let's go maybe to a 1.3. Let's see how that looks. All right. So as you can see here, it looks better, but at the same time, there's a lot of cross stitches. So what we want to do is select the underlay option and deselect any underlay you have. And we have a lot less stitches now. Now what we could do is go to our shaping tool and add the angle lines to go kind of the same way as the ones in the back. Now you don't want it exactly the same way because they could hide inside of those stitches. So since the color is very similar, I'm going to go a little bit on a different angle. And there we go. Now it might not look super realistic now, but once you stitch it out, you're going to see it's going to look a lot better. Okay, so now let's continue. Let's do the top now. As you can see, you don't have to be so perfect here. I'm just basically just clicking around. If you, if you really want to make it, you could, but it's not going to make a huge difference, okay? Remember, it's, it's random hairs. Now let's go into our selecting tool. Make sure this is the right color. Okay, we're going to put it in black. Let's go ahead and add our angle line, do the same thing. Now for this one, I'm not going to do half of it. I'm actually just going to grab this whole piece and press right click, then press copy, right click again, paste it. So now I have one on top of the other. And what I'm going to do with this one is take out the underlay, and take out the density by maybe a 1.3. And remember, let's go back to the dark gray because this is going to be dark gray. And the angle line, I'm going to change it up as well. Maybe not too much. We just want to make sure that it's not going to uh, hide in between the other lines. All right, so now let's go ahead and continue. And I'm going to reselect my complex fill, make sure I'm in the color that I need it to be. Also select the magic wand because this is pretty simple. It makes it very easy on us because we vectorized it. But not only that, when you're using Chroma Lux, you're able to copy, paste, and change the effect on it. So it makes it, it makes it so much easier. So what you can see here is that there's a line that goes from one eyebrow to the next, and that's called a jump stitch. Obviously, you don't want that to be in your design. So what I'm going to do is once I'm completely finished, I'm going to select the whole design, and I'm going to add the commands to trim. All right, so let's go back to our complex fill and finish this up. So in some of them, I'm pressing the control and holding it down. And towards the end, I'm just letting go of the control button. I want to do the same thing. Let's go to our angle lines. Now, this one kind of looks a lot less dense, even on the black. So let's go ahead and bring the density down. Let's take out the underlay in this one as well. I'm gonna leave this angle. Let's go ahead and go to our selecting tool. Let's copy and paste. And now I'm going to make this into a light gray. Let's go to our shaping tool and let's move the angle line. Now we already have the underlay deselected. So let's just take out more density. Let's go back to 1.3. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. Let's go to our complex fill, control, hold down the control, letting go of the control, holding it down again, and letting it go, right clicking outside, and it'll auto fill. Let's go to our shaping tool. Now let's go to our angle. Let's change our angle lines. Let's 
And let's take out some density of this one as well. Let's also take out the underlay on this one. Okay, so now let's go ahead and go back to our selecting tool. Let's copy, paste. Let's change the color to a dark gray. Let's change the density to 1.3. Now the angle line, you can change it up a little more. All right, guys, so we're getting pretty close now. Let's go ahead and move on over to uh, the beard again. I want to make some small edits. So let's go over to the back piece, which is this one here. We're just going to select it. And let's go over to our shaping tool for it. And all I'm going to do is just maybe add some points. You can right click on the points and make it into a line if you want to have it kind of a little bit pointier. You could do that. Okay, we can make this one into a line as well. Make it into a line. You can add one here, add a point, leave it as symmetrical. All right, so as you can see, I edit the beard lines and just to make it look a little bit more random, I added some extra points and I made them into lines so it can kind of be pointy. Just a little effect there that it's, it might not do a lot, but it is going to be a little noticeable. So let's move over to the uh, lips now. Select a complex fill. Let's go over and select the new color. Put it over the lips. Maybe a little darker. I think that's fine. I'm gonna choose this one. Make sure you right click on it so you can stay on that color. Now remember we have to overlap as much as we can. So what I'm going to do is just keep tracing while holding sometimes the control and letting it go. And that's totally fine. What I'm going to do here is add a hole. So let's go ahead and bring forward our bitmap. And now I'm going to select uh, the lips and go into our shaping tool. And now you're going to right click on the purple line and you're gonna add a hole. So let's go ahead and add a hole right here. All right guys, now we're ready to move on to the white. So let's go over to the complex fill. Let's select the next color as white. This one's pretty simple. We've used this a couple times already. And I'm just going to trace it. Now, I just noticed that my gums are kind of showing. So what I'll do is I'll edit my lips and make sure those, uh, those little triangles are showing. So let's go ahead and choose our selecting tool, make the teeth white. Let's bring forward our bitmap and let's select the lips one more time. Let's go to the shaping tool. And what we can do here is I'll right click on the purple line, add a, add a point, make sure it's a line. Okay, we can add another point here and go just like this. Okay, let's keep doing the same thing. You can change the angles around if you want to. Make sure you don't forget to put this into a line so it can give it that uh, little effect. You could also edit your angles. Let's go ahead and do that as well. Now the reason why I'm using the lips as the same color as the gums is because I don't want to have too many trims and it's very much the same color. So once I add this black line across here, that will cover it up and split it up so you won't really notice that is the same part of the lips. Let's go ahead and add this part here. Now there's two ways you could do this. You can make it into a satin stitch all the way across, but in my opinion, I feel like this uh, little end areas won't look as good. It'll look a little bit more squared out. Also, it could take a little longer. So what I'm going to do is make it into a regular complex fill and then create the hole and then convert it into a satin stitch. So let's do that now. All right, let's go into our selecting tool. Make sure we're on the right color. Let's bring the bitmap over to the front. Let's select that area and go into our shaping tool. Right click on the line and add a hole. All right, so let's go ahead and see how that looks. Let's unview the bitmap and you can see a little better now. Let's go ahead and select it. 
let's right click, convert it to a satin stitch. Okay, let's go ahead and add some density. Let's put 0 0.3. We won't need a uh, underlay for this, so let's take it out. And now that we're looking at this, we're also noticing that the lips are going side to side. So let's make sure we, one, we bring the density to 0 0.3. And two, let's go to our shaping tool and grab the angle line and bring it up and down. There we go. Now the teeth will make it into a 0 0.3 density as well. But not only that, remember we have to show the gum lines. So I'm going to bring it one step behind. So you can do it two ways. You can go to your selecting tool, select it, and right click on it. Now you're gonna see order, and you can put backwards. So it'll go one step backwards. And there we go. All right, let's see if we're missing anything else here. Okay. So if you guys like these tips or just want more videos all about embroidery, let us know in the comments below. Also, check us out on Instagram where we have over 25,000 followers where we share content just like this and host giveaways. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.